Hello, and welcome to Energy Connect's second webinar in partnership with Sean Bouget. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're delighted to bring you this live, interactive webinar as Sean Bouget presents 3D Reservoir Mapping while Drilling Service. I'm Julian Walker, the Editor-in-Chief of Energy Connects, and I'm delighted to be moderating this live session. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I know we have a global audience joining us for this webinar, and it's great to see. And we're really happy that you've taken the time out of your busy day to join us. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to bring you to your attention the screen in front of you. As you can see, it's quite a dynamic screen, and you can move it around as much as you like into whatever your designed preference is, so that you can get fully involved in this webinar. So please do move the screens around and get comfortable with the layout that's best for you. You can also alert your friends and associates because we'll be live for the next hour, so if they haven't joined us yet, they still have time. Both of our experts will have a presentation, after which we'll open it up to the audience for all your burning questions. We really want you to get involved, so please put any questions you have to our experts throughout the show, and I will do my best to answer both our experts after their presentations. Finally, you'll find some resources and research from Shlom Roger and ourselves that you can download and digest at your leisure after the webinar. Now we're all done with the main housekeeping, let's get down to the business of today's webinar. I am glad to welcome our panel of experts from Shlom Roger to discuss this important topic, 3D mapping while drilling. I will introduce them very quickly to you, and as you can see, they're on your screen now. We have Moro Friandante, who is in Romania, and Jean-Michel Denishu, who is in Norway. Great to have you. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. And you can read their full bios on your screen as well. Now, let's get started with this webinar. And I know all of you have signed in to listen to what Moreau and Jean-Michel have to say and to see their presentations. So to kick things off, I'm going to start with Jean-Michel and then Moreau will carry on his presentation after a short video. Jean-Michel, I leave it in your hands. Hello, thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Jean-Michel Denichou, and I'm quite happy to introduce another step change on the geosteering world, the 3D reservoir mapping while drilling services from Schlumberger. The Geosphere 360 3D reservoir mapping while drilling services provide 3D real-time reservoir steering and high-definition mapping while drilling. The resistivity inversion mapping results are delivered in real-time using high computing power with a digital workflow that can be run on the cloud or on-premises. Real-time data transmission of 3D EM measurement is optimized for both metals and wide drill pipe telemetry. The 2D transverse resistivity inversion are generated in real-time as we drill to provide high-definition multidimensional reservoir mapping and generate 3D volumetric distribution of mapped layers. The 2D transverse resistivity inversion are represented using a resistivity scale where cold colors, blue, represent more conductive features and warm colors, red and yellow, represent more resistive features. The resisting 3D volumes are also presented using the same resistivity scale and could be filtered to uh, provide uh, an enhanced visualization of the multidimensional bodies, the 3D bodies. But let's see now a short video that is introducing the technology. You are here, sitting at the newest technology-driven intersection of how you work and where you work. Because with Geosphere 360 service, while you may be here, you're actually working down here at the center of your drilling operations. 
instantly immersed in a detailed reservoir environment, virtually navigating the reservoir to better understand its unique complexities, while leveraging a more comprehensive volume of knowledge to give more definition and clarity and insight into the data surrounding your well path. Revealing details on reservoir structure and fluid distribution while drilling. And that enables 3D proactive geosteering to ensure you are always right on target. Let's nudge that down to the right. Stay in the sweet spot. Ultimately, better production starts with better understanding the reservoir. And better understanding starts with seeing every part of your reservoir in every dimension. And more importantly, reducing the uncertainty around what lies ahead. Because with Geosphere 360 service, no matter where you need to be, no matter where you are, it provides not just insights, but full 3D insights. There you are. Where have you been? Super, thanks from Michelle. That was really good to see that uh, really well put together video. And I'm going to now put you in the hands of Moore, who's going to go into some in-depth uh, case studies. Thanks. So the 3D reservoir mapping well drill service has been deployed by several operators worldwide for a large variety of applications as 3D reservoir steering, 3D reservoir understanding, 3D reservoir dynamics, and 3D field development planning. And the benefit that was given to our customer are several, including uh, improved production, accurate reserve in place evaluation, optimized completion design, and extend the life of the field. The first case study that I'm showing you today is coming from Norway, where Jamie is based. And is showing how the uh, 3D reservoir mapping water release service was run in a complex plastic reservoir for uh, um, 3D reservoir steering application. So the challenge that we have here is that we have a wage reservoir structure. So it means, means that the cap having the capability to measure lateral variation both vertically but also sideways was crucial. And that's the reason, that's the reason why we run this service for our client in Norway. Here, what you can see is uh, the uh, in black, the executed well, and then we have uh, the 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion. So as you can see from this picture, we can map using the 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion several layers, including the top of the reservoir. The plan is to stay between three to seven meters into the reservoir. But when we are looking at 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion, we don't have information on how the sand is developing sideways. And here is where the uh, 3D reservoir mapping well drilling service uh, come to play. So now looking at the 2D transverse resistivity inversion, we can clearly see a thickening of the sand towards the left side of the well. And uh, the decision at this point was taken to start an azimuthal steer in order to keep the well within the good sweet spot. As a result of this uh, strategic azimuthal steering, the well uh, exposes the, uh, the reservoir 100 meters more of net bay. The next case study that I'm uh, presenting now is uh, from Saudi Arabia where uh, the 3D reservoir mapping while drilling service was run in a channel sand reservoir for both 3D reservoir steering and 3D reservoir understanding application in order to keep the well into the sweet spot and also map the reservoir thickness and the distribution of the sand in real time. In black, again, is the executed well. And we have the 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion and the 2D transverse resistivity inversion. We can see how the well is crossing different quality sand and highlighting possible lateral facies variation. The 2D transverse resistivity inversion shows how the best quality sand were developing more towards the right side of the well. As a consequence, the trajectory has been adjusted in real time and azimuthally steered to keep the well within the sweet spot and increase the productivity of the well. 
Furthermore, what we can uh, see is that uh, the uh, 3D volume that was generated in real time was crucial because we can really appreciate now what is the distribution of the sand. We take this volume, we can filter them for resistivity domain and I like, for example, the high resistivity bodies associated with the channel sand that we are drilling. When you're looking at this kind of picture, you cannot really see what is happening on the other side of the curtain section that contain the 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion. But now we have the capability to display all this information, this 3D information on different plane. For example, on the top of this picture, we have a map view, a top view. So we are viewing now the reservoir from above and we are cutting an horizontal plane intersecting the trajectory. So we can clearly see how the resistivity zone associated to the reservoir is more developed towards the red si right side of the well, as is characterized by a strong resistivity response with the red and yellow color, versus the conductive zone, the shell that is on the uh, left side of the well. Then on the bottom, you can clearly see now the volumetric computation of the uh, channel sand body when we are filtering out the resistivity uh, domain, uh, the conductive one, and we keep the high resistive one. The final case study that I'm showing today is uh, from Australia. And here we run the 3D reservoir mapping well drill service in a deep complex reservoir in a producing oil field to optimize the site track plan, optimize the well path and adapt the completion design and assist in calibrating the customer dynamic reservoir model. The challenge that the client had was that they had to redrill well uh, due to some uh, issues during the completion of the, of the well. So the, we took the information from the original well, the uh, 3D reservoir steering, and we looked at the distribution of the sand, where it was more distribution, either to the right side or to the left side of the well. Based on this, we planned the well to be drilled on the right side of the well. So now what you see here in this picture is the original well in yellow. Then on the back, there is the redrill well with the associated 1D uh, longitudinal inversion and the 2D transverse resistivity inversion. And uh, when we compare the results between the original and redrilled, there was very good correspondence between the mapping results of the two. And something interesting is that what came next when we start looking at the results in real time. So we filtered out all the conductive features now, and we are showing both the 2D transfers from the two wells that are matching each other, but also we highlight the distribution of the sand, filtering out the conductive domain. But then we look to, to the conductive features that we were mapping in the redrill well that were not present along the original well. With the discussion with the, the reservoir engineering, the decision was that the interpretation was that these are a finger, finger, fingerings of water, this conductive feature coming from the original well. So the decision was taken in basically in real time uh, to, co to complete isolate this area in order to delay uh, the water cut, the water production. So what we can say about this service? that the uh, JOSFIT 360 reservoir mapping while drilling service goes beyond reservoir mapping to the layers. It provides in real time fluid volumes, bodies, faults, and lithology at the reservoir scale. This service unlocks the reservoir geometries and characteristics to enable booking more reserve, produce more oil, enhance completion design. And as a result, the JOSFIT 360 extends the life of a field, allowing to place fewer, better wets with great certainty and improve returns from complex reservoir. So Julian, thanks a lot for uh, the opportunity to present and I uh, guess that we can uh, go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you so much more and Jean-Michel. Um, and as you can all see, um, there's details of more and Jean-Michel's um, contact details if you want to get in touch. But yeah, please anyone, got questions coming in, do drop us uh, a question if you've got any specific um, points you want to ask about this technology. Um, and I certainly have a few now. So um, we've got a, you know, about 45 minutes here with everyone. So yeah, please do drop us a line. Um, more, I'd like to um, actually just start with you. You've just talked about some of the benefits of the technology, but uh, could you actually 
specifically just sort of say how you feel that this technology differs from previous geo-steering technologies? Okay, so the first, the answer is very uh, straightforward. We are adding one extra dimension of interpretation to the previous geo-steering technology. The previous adjusting technology was done in a, uh, in a plane that was basically a vertical plane, longitudinal plane along the trajectory. But we were blind on what was happening around the, the, well, the well, well drilling, right, on the reservoir. Now we are able to display in real time this information, take advice decision on not only what we see above and, and, and below us, but also right and left. So this opened a new way of steering the well. So now we can steer the well uh, following the faults, or we can plan uh, respect that uh, water coning that can be nearby us, and we want to get distance from it. So really, we are extending uh, the just steering to a new dimension. Also, if we are looking, uh, I'm, uh, I will take, I will use some of uh, also what is new actually of the technology itself. Okay, yeah. so. To run this tool, we had to implement several changes on the previous generation of uh, the reservoir mapping while draining technology. Now we have new calibrated 3D EM measurements. And uh, <clears throat> in order to have this calibrated measurement, we implemented a new calibration kit and facility for improve the, the, the measurement itself. This is under patent pending, but you can clearly see, you can see the picture that is on the, on the, on the screen. And uh, in order to transmit all this, the new amount of data that we have uh, in our, uh, real time, what we had to do was also to improve and change the board inside, uh, inside with our tool. Up to soon, six new controller and acquisition boards has been redesigned and implemented. So now we are able to send all this huge amount of data that is necessary for generating this 3D reservoir mapping in real time. Great, thanks a lot there, Moe. Um, and John michelle I'm just gonna ask you a question here about you know, what kind of geo-steering challenges that you plan to address in the new technology? Oh, well, there, there, there are values, I think that, yeah. you know, the, 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 the geo-steering just during business and just during uh, discipline, I've been uh, for for trying to adapt to uh, to what was available to make decision. Okay, so for a long time, we have been uh, uh, extrapolating and modeling a lot on the environment and just uh, uh, trying to make decision or base decision for uh, for just during on the few information that we have. So I'm pretty sure that having uh, a new dimension and having a larger view of the of the environment will be uh, uh, valuable for for a lot of people in the, in the industry delivering that. Then after that, uh, for sure, any uh, any bypass oil, any uh, attic oil, any uh, challenges that uh, that we can face in our in the, the the quest for the last drop of oil, if you want, I think certainly will. Uh, will uh, benefit from having this technology. I think we will have a better understanding of not only what is above and below, but also what is on the side, where to, uh, where to uh, avoid the fault, where to, uh, for mm -hmm. example, uh, ident identify the structure when we are on the flank of a reservoir, a folded reservoir, this kind of things. So I think there's a, a large number of applications that's really good to hear. Um, and we've got a, a question here asking about, um, you know, previously drilled wells with, um, you know, your previous geosphere technologies um, services. Um, and they're, you know, asking, can you reprocess them and show them in the new 360 um, service you've launched? So I think I think that's that will uh, that will all depend on the, the generation of the of tools that were used initially for this plan okay. uh, for this well for example in uh, uh, Nelson is talking about uh, 2015 I think but if the if the the the, uh, the hardware that were used and the framework that were that were used at that time can allow us to reprocess the data and we generate those curves potentially if there's a benefit I think that is something that uh, 
that could be considered. I don't know where uh, Nelson is located, but uh, certainly I will encourage him to uh, to contact the Schlumberger representative in his location to uh, to evaluate what what is possible to be done. Yeah, absolutely. And any questions, just to point out, that uh, uh, will be answered also after the webinar as well, if there's any follow-up questions. Um, OK, well, thanks, Jean-Michel. We've also got a question from Xavier from the Dubai Petroleum, um, sort of asking, you know, inversion takes place on the size, but he's asking about what about a head or, are you know, with the new technology, the 360, are you know, closer to the bit as compared to the previous geosphere tools? Um, one of you like to answer that? Yeah, Mauro, you don't expect me to do all the work, so... You want me to, to go ahead with this? Yes, okay, yes, sure. so with, the, with this current generation of tools, we are still imaging uh, uh, sideways, okay? We, we, are, we don't have yet an answer product for the horizontal wells looking ahead. Um, the, the tool has a sensitivity to, to features that are ahead and a similar design uh, is uh, what we have for the iris sphere tool, for example, where we have the look ahead capability in vertical well. It's not a matter of the sensitivity, it's a matter of being able to generate an inversion process in real time in a complex environment that at the moment is, uh, is, uh, is still, uh, still not answered this, this uh, challenge. Okay. So um, regarding the measure point, uh, the measure point is, uh, is uh, it, it applies the, the same rules uh, of the midpoint between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, thanks, Mo. I appreciate uh, answering that. And actually, kind of leads um, myself to sort of ask, um, you know, what are the deliverables from such a technology, you know, the, your new update to the geoassisting service? Okay, so I will go back to the slide, one of the case study, just because it's easier mm -hmm. to point out what are the deliverables. Yeah. So obviously we are delivering wells drilled uh, in the sweet spot uh, and uh, and so on. It is part of the geosteering service and the reservoir mapping. But now the, we are part of the Petrel uh, and Delphi ecosystem. So we are taking advantage to be in the, uh, using this software, this the geosteering software for the uh, 360 in this platform. So all our output are uh, point with attributes with resistivity and can be shared basically in real time now through Interact with our client. So our client can basically visualize what our present engineer is running into their software. So this is, I think, a huge advantage because open the door to interpretation uh, because uh, this data can be loaded by the reservoir engineer. So if we are mapping a waterfront, he can compare it to the reservoir model and see if there is a match, calibrate the history data of the reservoir model. This data can be used by a geophysicist to calibrate the seismic because obviously while drilling, no, there is an uncertainty of the seismic calibration velocity model, but we can have we can use now this information to have a more advised calibration of the seismic. So this is uh, basically w where we are now. We are we open mm -hmm. a full digital solution for our client. It's not only now a, a nice picture, a snapshot as we were used to do <laughs> long time ago, but now is a full uh, full digital. Great, thanks a lot, Mo. Um, we've got a question here from Zine, who's I think just want a bit more explanation of, um, you know, where the the calculation and data is sent to. Um, you know, is it um, sent to the surface or well placement engineer, or is it done all, you know, surface systems? So I think just a bit more of an explanation. I think asked by Zina. I go, no. me, you go. You choose. So yeah, yes. So we are making measurement uh, between various. Uh, transmitter and receiver and don't hold those measurement are or those uh, measurement yes are calculated and uh, logs if you want and series of uh, measurements are computed but then they are sent to surface I think in average I think there's between 80 to, uh, to 120 measurements that are sent to surface and at surface we make sense of all of them at the same time to reconstruct for those 2D models and then 3D volumes that are the core for the for the decision. And even for that, we uh, we need, as it was mentioned during the presentation, 
I think we are using uh, high computing resources that are available in the cloud. So I uh, know the, uh, the mo mo most of the processing and obviously the interpretation, but most, most of the processing is done at, uh, at surface and uh, okay. even remotely, not at the well site actually. It's, uh, most of the time it's uh, in operator's office or remotely in connection with uh, operator's uh, center of uh, support center for operations. Great. Well, thanks a lot, um, Jean-Michel. Um, I'm quite interested also how um, you know, this you know, technology you know, is integrated into Schlumberger's digital vision. Um, <laughs> so, I'd hear more. so yes, so yes, this is a, a little bit what, uh, what I was touching on. I think that, uh, that the, we, we have the, the, the ability now, I think, with the, with the, the internet and, of course, to, uh, to share a lot of information. And uh, therefore, all those measurements that are the base for interpretation uh, can be shared in multiple, uh, in multiple places. So we are taking advantage of the, uh, the strategy that the corporate strategy that Schumberger has to uh, digitalize and is the digitalization and the, the data exchange and the processing exchange uh, under the Delphi umbrella to, uh, to uh, truly provide the ability to compare, to uh, first uh, receive this information and uh, also to have the ability in real time to integrate the interpretation of this extra information into an existing uh, field development plan or compare that with the, uh, a reservoir, an existing reservoir model. So I think this is purely the this is pure, this is a uh, solutions, if you want, that are tailored to, to, to be used in the, in the digital world of, uh, of Delphi, if you want. Great. Oh, that's really, really good to hear all the integration that, that's going on. Um, uh, just got uh, a question come in from Francisco, um, sort of talking about match and calibrated data. Um, do you uh, do you think with the current advances in technologies, we could use three D mapping, AI, and ML to use the inversion procedure, reconstruct, and even more to use the retrosthenetic approach to create a model that, in principle, could be trained instead of match it all over again? So. Uh... I'm trying to read the second because it was a long question. I'm trying to yes the one from Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Match I think and yeah. calibrate data. Go ahead, Jimmy. No, no. I, I finished already. Uh, I think yeah, so certainly where we have internally some uh, some work and exploration work on uh, how to take benefit of uh, AI and uh, AI and machine learning and. Uh, at, at the same time, I think we have a, a long history, at least for Schlumberger, we have a long history of, uh, of uh, inversion deployment. And uh, I think the computing power that is available now is, has helped us to, have, to uh, not be limited for the time it takes to, uh, to do the processing. And somehow those, the process that we have for the inversion uh, using or constructing the measurements is uh, somehow maybe the most uh, um, robust in order to not lose the the sense of the the measurement and the sensitive and respect if you want the specificity of the measurement that we are using so there are certainly uh, certainly we will benefit in the near future to deploy a combination of inversion and artificial intelligence and then benefiting from artificial intelligence and machine learning. But uh, I would say that would be more to, uh, to optimize the use of the, the inversion algorithm than to replace them. Super. Thanks, Jean-Michel. Um, and we've actually just heard from Zine again, just asking for clarification on um, the question she asked. Uh, just, you know, with the high number of data measured, have you faced any problems with, uh, you know, high frequency or the bit rate telemetry, especially if you're used with other um, drilling services? Uh, 
have you, have you come across that? Yeah, we, 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 faced, we faced the problem. Uh, however, at the same time that we developed this uh, new uh, technology for uh, 3D acquisition, I think we also de developed a new compression algorithm as well as new uh, uh, hardware for data transmission. So everything has been improved together. And uh, so we, are, we do not, with the proper planning, we do not face this kind of problem. Great. Well, that's uh, thanks for the clarification there. Um, Mo, I want to get you in and um, just talk probably a bit more about, you know, the track record and experience you've had with this new technology. I know you went on three specific examples, but I think it might be good for the audience to hear a bit more. Yes. So, um, you know, we've been field testing this technology now for uh, for a few years. And uh, the track record that we had, um, I, I, we believe that is quite impressive because the, we, we, the technology has been deployed by several count, uh, customers, but also in different geological settings. And uh, we drilled and logged more 80,000 feet with this uh, technology, 3,000 operating hours, 30 plus run. Actually, I think that now we are already almost close to 40. And uh, we basically, we, we deployed in eight countries. Uh, including the UK, Saudi, Qatar, Australia, China, Norway, and uh, Kuwait, and US. So uh, very good uh, experience that we had during the field test um, with a broad uh, number of challenges and geological environment. So, yes. Right, that's really impressive to see. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned, um, you know, the UK there. Do you, any more country examples you, you might want to highlight outside the three that you specifically spoke about? So about, sorry, any other case any more, study? Any uh, or... country example you might want to talk about um, of an example of uh, the GSB 360 being used outside the three examples you had in the presentation? Okay, uh, so the moment, you know, we, so we, we have several case studies that are actually available on the public hub, so everybody can actually access okay. it. So if you go to www.slb.com, and probably we will put a link for it, I think will be will be easier. So you can access uh, several case studies. Uh, we have uh, several papers that can be um, SPA, SPWLA papers where people can go uh, and look for it. You have mine and Jean Michel contact details, so if people want, they can ask us, uh, and we can easily provide this reference for them. Um, if I have to say uh, some application that I don't have here slides to support it, but uh, they are released, and uh, I know very well because I was there. It was in Qatar, um, where we we did something really interesting uh, using this technology during a workover. So it was not really well drilling was we went back to help the client to better understand what was happening to one of their injector well. So we used this technology, we went down without drilling, but we relogged all the well, and we used this information combining them with the 4D seismic and uh, to better understand the injectivity of the, of the water was injected into the reservoir. So it's something uh, really interesting, and uh, so we can provide this uh, case study, and there are uh, I think a couple of papers out of it. Great. Well, I think there'll be uh, anyone interested in that. And we've had a question here sort of asking about, do you think uh, there's a good opportunity to bring this technology to South America? Well, mm. it's missing South America from this map. So we are uh, looking for it, right? <laughs> it's just that... Uh, so uh, I, I'm pretty sure um, uh, that it will come soon also in South America. If someone has any... Uh, challenges or interest, they can contact us and we can look for it. Yeah, there, there's uh, certainly no uh, uh, hidden uh, politics or anything. I think uh, just a reminder that uh, this deep, uh, ultra deep uh, EM measurement were first tested in uh, in South America in uh, in Brazil with uh, with Petrobras. So I think certainly, I would be more than happy to uh, to go for a few months in South America. Great. Well, let's hope. Um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, on, on that point, that's quite interesting about, um, you know, you, you mean 
running the you know thirty runs. What other sort of markets would you be looking for to get into? Jamie, excuse me. I was uh, I was listening. I was uh, reading the the question from Francisco. So. I was not okay, we, we'll, we'll answer that yeah, afterwards. I was just saying, obviously, a question there coming in, you know, specifically about South America and obviously now seeing what, you know, what the global experience you have with Geosphere 360. Are there any other markets you're sort of looking at or would like to get into to bring this technology? No, I think, I, <laughs> uh, I think, I think for sure, I think that we, we will be happy to, uh, to deploy that is uh, is many parts of the world, and uh, I think there's a. Uh, it will, I would say that there's a natural trend that yes, we will. Uh, this uh, uh, this technology will be deployed on uh, more and more location. If you consider the the footprint that we have already globally for for geosteering services, I think that make it easy for us to uh, uh, to uh, allocate or to reallocate uh, technology on the specific cases. Yes. And actually, we, are, we we have plans because, as I mentioned, I think we are delivering geosteering services in many locations. So mm -hmm. we are already evaluating uh, where it will be strategic and where it will be a more beneficial, the most beneficial for the operators to uh, to deploy this uh, to deploy this technology on their on their operation. Yes. Super. Thanks, Jean Michel. And as you yeah, you mentioned there, for, for, for Francois. So asked a sort of a question about how um, you think the, the technology and information that you're gathering could be used in other fields such as EOR. You, um... So, Francisco, okay. They sort of got a question well, at the end the there. security information you guys provide by using other features you are the optimized process that you mentioned yes so basically that is uh, is uh, the integration and uh, going back to understand uh really the reservoir dynamics so this uh, open uh, uh clear integration also with your procedures right to better understand how we can improve the production from the well understanding okay. what is uh, what is uh, the the true not the true but what is uh, happening down hole in uh, in a more uh, comprehensive way so as i said we are working uh, in, we, we actually then run in several uh, rim up mode in several wells that were drilled many years before mm -hmm. to understand what is happening to help our client to design completions to isolate zones that they are basically open and uh, where they are getting water coming in so it to extend the life basically recover a well that was basically already drained and uh, extend as a consequence the life of the field itself so Super this there is, a, there is a paper about this uh, coming out next week so will be soon available also on the on uh, to be distributed Okay. Well, again, Francois could you know follow up and maybe ask about that. Um, yeah. Got a few more questions coming in. Um, the next one um, from Falco is asking: uh, Can the, your new tool be used for fracture mapping, and uh, what is the resolution? So, uh, yes and no. <laughs> so, uh, fracture mapping. When you're speaking about fracture, you're speaking something that has, you know, uh, is, it can be millimeters or but microns, mm -hmm. right? So the resolution that we have is not at that level. But if the fractures is a conductive fractures or there is water, a pathway along these fractures, this, this normally when you have a fractures that are um, there, you have a cluster of them. So it's a, it's a zone that get fractures. Basically you are opening your reservoir with water that can come in, right? This influx. So then, yes, and this is few of the case that we saw, we are able to map this conductive corridor and relate them uh, to the fractures that we can identify using other LWD tools designed for this, like uh, high resolution LWD imaging tool. Uh, so we have example in which we are basically comparing the two things and there is a good match because the fracture, an LWD image 
has a very good vertical resolution, but is just nearby the whirlpool. You don't know what is happening already a few inches away from you. But then we have a deeper measurement, and when you combine together, you get the, the true picture of what is happening to, to the rocks in the reservoir. Super. Well, thanks, Nora, for answering that question. Um, we've got another one here from uh, Shahid from Adnok, um, asking, is this technology applicable to salt caverns and all the purpose-built purpose, purpose -built energy storage caverns? So uh, we'll, we, we were just talking about the you know, plan for, for deploying the technology worldwide, and uh, uh, the ideas I've, I've heard, and uh, no later than two days ago, I was discussing with uh, some of some people in Abu Dhabi about this project. So, yes, we are evaluating how much that can be uh, that can be used in the case of the salt cavern for for storage. We are uh, we are evaluating that and already with uh, in, in collaboration with some of your colleagues from Adnoc. Yes. Great. Well, that's really good to hear. And you know, still send some questions in um, if if you have any. Um, and you know, before we we head off, um, I'd be really good to sort of get a sort of final um, comment and out outlook for the, both you, Moa and Jean Michel. Um, you know, for this technology. You want first, Maro? No, I, I leave you. You know, by <laughs> respect, I let you speak first. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think certainly. I think, that, as we were saying, I think that uh, that has been a kind of a, a long-term work that we have done in order to be able to uh, to display this kind of uh, uh, 3D reconstruction, and uh, that is a major step, I think, in the geosteering uh, in the geosteering world. So, uh, after after that, uh, it has to be clear that. This is not the ultimate tools. I think we were talking about resolution earlier. I think yeah. this tool has some limits, and uh, we know, I think people who have been doing geosteering know that there's many, many different types of, uh, of challenges from geological point of view or constraints that are related to the, the production and the type of fluid and this kind of thing. So, so certainly, uh, I'm, I would not say that this is the ultimate solution. Geosphere 360 is the ultimate solution that will fix all the problem. However, at the same time, uh, having a larger picture, a clearer picture of the environment, and then focusing on specific details like uh, fluid identification, now that we have a better understanding of the structure of the reservoir, for example, or uh, maybe a, a better understanding of where, what are the, 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 the fault blocks and what are the compartmentalization of the, of the reservoir uh, can be critical. So I think we... Uh, we are happy to 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 be able to uh, to contribute to the success of the uh, the industry with this, uh, I think, uh, game-changing technology. And uh, that's it. Super. Thanks, Jean Michel. I think that's great to hear. Um, and we've actually got uh, another question just come in. Um, she duo um, just asking: um, Is there any plan, to, you know, for the answer of products? for the 3D parameters of, let's say, the sand body, such as true thickness or major direction, is that going to come? So I think, uh, uh, I think certainly if you are talking about sand bodies, I think certainly this technology will help to, uh, in the delineation and in the, the volumetric reconstruction of those sand bodies. And certainly uh, adding to it or integrating to it uh, information that we can get from Borol Imager, for example, or uh, the more standard spectroscopy, I think will uh, will help to fill the the gap of the other information. So, and for that to answer the question, integrated answer product is yes, certainly what we can do now with uh, with our digital solution, and uh, just 360 is already integrated into those uh, portfolio, if you want. Right. Yeah, so just uh, adding to Jamie, at the end, what Just Fear 360 is allowing us to do is to build the frame of the model. 
So mm -hmm. once we have the frame, we have uh, down whole other LWD measurement. We are able to run in the same BHA uh, LWD imaging tool, high resolution, so fractures, characterization, dips of the layer, accurate dips of the layer, but also petrophysical properties, uh, porosity, density, neutron. And we can then upscale this measurement using the frame that is built with the, with the, the Geosphere 360. So we have now this full approach that is allowing us basically to have a full integration, uh, everything done in the, in the same platform. Brilliant, thanks Mauro. And as you both said um, throughout, um, any further questions after the webinar, um, please do you know, get in touch. Um, we've got both Jean-Michel and Mauro's contact details and I'm sure they're very willing to answer and uh, get any of their local teams to help you out. Um, uh, and I just want to thank you both for a really interesting and lively discussion and really exciting to hear about this new uh, game-changing technology. Um, so we're going to uh, wrap up this webinar. Um, and ooh, just got a last-minute question just come in, maybe just before we go. Uh, it's actually asking about, um, this is Kirill asking um, that you've won this technology in the Middle East, considering the requirements to store the data. Uh, basically asking, do you need high computing power? Have you deployed the processing module to interpret the Geosphere 360 data in operator data centers or local cloud? Yes. Uh, yes, we are. Yes. Yes, both. There you go. So the... We have the service that can be run either um, on the cloud, but also in local solutions, tailored to the, the, the requirement, the local requirement for data residency. Yes. Yes, so I'm, I'm, more I'm more flexible than I, than I look like. <laughs> well, I think that's good to hear. Um, and I think that's the best way. But um, yeah, I just want to thank um, for all of you for joining us um, this last 45 minutes as we've looked at uh, 3D mapping while drilling and getting to understand why it differs from previous geosteering technologies. We also got to learn more about uh, you know, how it's integrated into Jean-Michel's digital vision. Um, it's certainly clear from both what you, Jean-Michel and Moan, uh, have said is, uh, you know, you see this as a clear game-changing technology and, you know, it's certainly going to be there to help you improve your volumetric reservoir understanding um but just yeah thank you both uh for joining me um and i really appreciate you giving your expertise and input uh into this topic and uh the webinar is going to be uh available on demand uh within 48 hours so um Everyone who's watching, you'll, you'll get an email in the next few days with a link to watch it on demand, and you'll also get a link for the, the presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and have a nice day, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks all for watching, and I hope you have a good morning, day, or evening, wherever you are. Stay safe, and do keep following us um, for more industry news and insights, and if you have any more questions on this uh, exciting topic, do get in touch with more and Jean-Michel. From all of us here, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.